Hi, and welcome to Total Recall. I'm Tom Scholey, author of Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics. My name is Matt Zioli. You can follow me on Instagram at cinema underscore tomb. And I've just launched a Patreon, so you can check that out on patreon.com and then just search Tom, S-C-I-O-L-I. And uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Tom Scholey or uh, on Instagram at Tom underscore Scholey. And you can follow the show on Twitter at Total Recall Show or on Instagram at Total underscore Recall underscore Show. Uh, Matt has a, uh, a new album out of, of music that he's uh, written and, and uh, performed. And if you want to tell people where they can find that. Yeah, you can find it uh, if you go to uh, santamiravideo.bandcamp.com. Uh, you can listen uh, and download the album. And this episode's being filmed by Brian Nadja, and you can check out his website, adspice.net. Power Rangers. Yeah, Power Rangers. Rangers. And the uh, Super Sentai uh, shows from Japan that are sort of what you know Power Rangers is, is made out of. Power Rangers were uh, probably one of the, like, the most, like, they were a, a force. <laughs> When when I was when I was younger in like elementary school, like it was a big deal. Yeah, and like a lot of sort of like youth culture things, um, they were kind of like dangerous and disreputable in the beginning. Like, uh, you know, parents were did not uh, you know were not cool with it, <laughs> and uh, there was like a little bit of you know like the satanic panic kind of thing to it. Except it was like, it, like there were a lot of um, sort of like trashy tabloid news stories about how if your kids watch Power Rangers, they're going to be, like, beating each other up on the schoolyard. They're going to be, like, breaking teeth. They're going to jump off the roof. You know, all that kind of, like, scare the parents kind of media. I, uh, luckily, like, I, I, I missed when I was younger, like, any, like, negative news stories yeah. about it. But, um, I think they might have been right because during a recess, we were doing... <laughs> Doing the moves, yeah, we sure. were definitely doing martial arts, which was awesome. So, uh, I mean, uh, like, I love it. Yeah, the, like, it's, it's. I think it's been pretty clearly proven that, like, the replication, if, if like the violence is replicable, then it will be replicated. You and know? I loved replicating that violence. Yeah, you know, like um, Power Rangers. Like, when it came out, I was kind of like, okay, I'm probably like a little too old for this. Like, I was still a kid. But it was—it felt like it was for the younger kids, you know. It was like, uh, you know, like, you know, had like the goofiness of it. But I was a fan, and I watched it because the combat was amazing. Like I've yeah. never seen combat like that on TV. The speed of it, the skill, just just like amazing, like bombastic, and the pace of the action scenes, and then the sort of like the kaiju action, yes. like the giant uh, monsters, and then the giant robots fight. It was. Uh, and, and again, the editing and the, the the speed of it and the action was like it 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 was kind of like it delivered on the promise of the Godzilla movies, where it's like you're seeing these like really amazing fights between like giant robots, some, sometimes giant robot dinosaurs. Oh, I love it. Uh, you know, versus these like you know very cool looking monsters. But then you'd have like these like sort of scenes you'd have to sort of sit through, where it's like, okay, this is the kid stuff. This is like the uh, you know, like the, the Saved angel. by the Bell, or uh, you know, like um, the, it was like it was like a bad um, Beverly Hills nine hundred two one zero, where it's like the so, they're at the soda shop, they're at the Peach Pit. They yeah. weren't at the Peach. It's like, hey, there, there's Angel Grove. It, uh, there's the Peach Pit there. Hey, we're this time we're at the Angel Grove Youth Center. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was you know, and it, and it had the same kind of like nine hundred two one zero thing of like guys playing uh high school students who are like way too old to be playing high school yeah the um you got your like david yoss <laughs> austin st john's your uh um amy joe johnson yeah amy joe johnson like you you have um amy joe johnson who went on to uh uh be on on felicity and then um and then there is there's even like in Felicity, there's like a costume party where like she gets in a fight or, or she she like, uh, you know, has an issue with somebody who's the pink Power Ranger. That's amazing. Or I would try to like sell like my, I remember like my parents or whatever, like trying to sell them on like, check this out. Like, this is, this is serious. At, you got to see this martial yeah, arts. Yeah, the, the action like, was so, like, it was <laughs> on point, you know, it, and, and that's what that, that was how I was able to like, okay, this 
this feels like kid stuff, but like I really like this. You know, this. Oh, it's uh, awesome! Like you'd see Zach would be out in like the like the outskirts of like L.A. or whatever, and Putties would run in, and he'd start like doing his martial arts. I'm like, I love it. The reason why we're even doing this episode is that not too too long ago, maybe like a few years ago, I. I saw this, um, you know, thing, this um, DVD set at the library, and it was like, you know, it was said like, you know, before there was Power Rangers, there was, you know, Super Sentai. So there was obviously like a, a show that influenced it. And then I watched it, and like from the first moment, like I was 100% on board. Like this was like all the great parts of Power Rangers with none of the bad parts. It was like, and so it was like, you know, it was kind of like a revelation. Like, I had known that, you know, Power Rangers, it was kind of like they took, you know, the Super Sentai series from Japan and then and then Saban repurposed it, yeah. you know, for like, for like an American audience. But I didn't realize just how good the source material was. That like all those bad, you know, sort of like Peach Pit kind of yes. uh, uh, scenes that are, that are like sort of in there, like when you take them out and then see like the original scenes, it had this um, like uh, Super Sentai Zoo Ranger had this whole um, like sort of mythic backstory where it's like they're not like modern teenagers who you know meet some kind of science fiction Wizard of Oz kind of thing that give, <laughs> gives them powers, but that they are these um, you know they're 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 these um, kids from like 130 million years ago who are uh, you know live in this era where dinosaurs coexist with humans and each one of them sort of like worships a different uh, you know, dinosaur spirit yeah. or, or, or animal spirit. Rita Repulsa in, in the original series is, she's called Bandora. She's supposed okay. to be Pandora. She's sort of like, you know, this. she's sort of like locked away. And when she's released, you know, all this evil comes into the world. And 130 million years ago or 170 million years ago, however long it is, um, she was like imprisoned within this, this uh, you know, this magic spell yeah. or whatever. And so then these uh, kids were, these teenagers were like frozen as well to only to be reawoken if, um, if Bandora comes back, if, if she's released, they'll be reawakened. And so like she, it, it, there's like a, um, there's like a, um, a mission to the planet Nemesis okay. where she's been imprisoned and then they accidentally like open up the thing. And so then she wakes up, releases all this evil back into the world and then um, you know the kids uh, from uh, you know prehistoric times wake up too, and it's like the way the whole story rolls. It's really um, without any hyperbole. It's uh, like the best superhero media I've ever seen in my life. Like it's it's um, it just like it's just so great. It's I've great from start to, to finish. See yeah, this. I, I I can only give it the, like. The highest recommendation. It's one of those things where it's like, okay, you this spoke was made. so highly of yes, it. Like, it. Yeah, it, it, it really like felt like, where have you been all my life? <laughs> uh, Super Sentai Zoo Ranger. And, you know, watched it from start to finish. You know, I, I ended up buying the, the DVD set. I liked it so oh, much. Right. Like, it's, it, it, to me, it's, it's like a classic. And it's got, it does, um, you know, and like the first couple episodes are like across the board, just spot on great. Um, and then as it goes on, like, it's a long season, so there are some dips, you know, and, and there are some, like, kind of, you know, stupid parts, oh, yeah. goofy parts, which is all kind of part of the fun. The 90s was Power Rangers. Was was this happening concurrently with Power Rangers, or was it, like, a few years prior, like, I mean, earlier 90s? I like... mean, the, the, the Super Sentai series is, like, I think it goes back to, like, maybe the late 60s or the early 70s, and it was, like, every season, it's a totally new cast, totally new storyline, but it basically has, like you know, uh, uh, young protagonists in, like, color-coordinated, like, each one has a different color outfit and some kind of powers, and then eventually different elements start coming in with each, where eventually it's like, okay, robots, and then, okay, robots that join together to form a thing, you know. But each one has, like, a different premise, and and I've watched a bunch of them. And and the one that uh, Saban based the uh, Power Rangers TV show on it was like he had bought the rights to like the whole series. He had the whole series. And for years he tried to like bring it to America. Nobody wanted it. And then, you know, eventually, you know, you know, he was able, able to get it on the air through through Fox. And this season that um, 
that you know the first season of Power Rangers is based on that it was um, it was like the most recent season. So it it predated Power Rangers by maybe a year, two years, something like that. It was it was um, you know and and for Saban he just kind of like um, you know just was kind of like okay let me just grab you know the newest one or yeah. what you know the one and and, and did it and um, watch it like I've watched a bunch of other seasons of the Super Sentai and so far it's like. This is like the best season. Like this, this blows all the other. It's it's like a real sweet spot. Again, I haven't seen every season, so maybe there's one I haven't seen. Yeah. But it it feels like magic. Like like if if it really was sort of like an arbitrary decision of like oh, I'll just take this one because it's recent. It it's like inspired because it's it it like it's amazing. Like I haven't seen one that has where all the elements come together like they do here. And also like it's it's from like I don't know early '90s, maybe the late '80s. Mm-hmm. But um, it it kind of like looks the best because it looks like it's from the '60s or '70s. I, I'm sp- spot on with that because like even when I was little, I could, I the film stock just looked different. So I, it was like you know when the putties are running around like LA's like like the, like some like a park in LA and then cuts to like different film stock. I'm like, well, this is like a they it's a piecemeal type. Yeah, like the the, the yeah the the um. Like original parts that that Saban filmed are like yeah like on video yeah you know, and and super like <laughs> uh, crystal clear and glossy and then there's like some definite film grade like beautiful it looks film great. grade I I don't know what was going on with the film <laughs> stock if maybe we're looking at like a third generation version of this film but it it, it looks it's so aged good. to perfection it's it's so beautiful and and the sound effects are great like the oh I love the this. robot sound effects are like. Are like incredible, and I and I love like I love that meshing of sort of like the science fiction stuff. It's like with the fantasy, you know, sort of Lord of the Rings kind of element. Like it's 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 just it's so perfect. The in, watching Power Rangers two when I was little, it was like comforting because each episode followed like a blueprint. So mm-hmm. it'd be like, okay, they're gonna do their ridiculous dialogue at the Angel Grove Youth Center. Mm-hmm. They're gonna have a skirmish with the putties at like the park. They're going to meet the kaiju as like a in his small, small form, yeah. and then uh, they're gonna fight him when he's large. <laughs> yeah, the the um, the like original version has like some formula elements, but it also has some like um, you know some sprawl, some conti- like continue like it it really has this amazing continued story that that builds like uh, it like ramps up step by step where it's like first they show up and it's just them. <laughs> fighting you know and they have like the bow and arrow like you know they have a bow and arrow or like an axe or whatever they get the coins that they put in their dino buckler and then um and then now they have their superhero suits and some laser guns and stuff and then they're like and they're riding around on motorcycles but then it's like and then one of like the megazords which are called like um you know like the spirit the spirits or whatever um you know like the tyrannosaurus robot shows up first and fights them on and then it's like and then the you know, and then the next episode, the other robots show up, and then it's like they learn that they can all join together. So it keeps like ramping up, ramping up, you know, through in, in a way that there are soap opera elements in Power Rangers, but it's it's not like the seamless kind of like um, you know multiple hour movie, mega movie that that like the show itself is. I, I'm I'm so stoked for it, and like when I was little, the appearance of the Green Ranger mm-hmm. was like. I thought Tommy was like li- like the like the coolest like if he's like start smoking cigarettes or something I'd be like yeah Tommy 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 he's got a yeah. ponytail it's a great like character <laughs> like, archetype and and that and it really like it really like the story is very like poignant and 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 really powerful like within the the Super Sentai um version but but it, it carries it's a very strong element in the Power Rangers too and it's it's like it's this great character type where it's like this like man of mystery, this masked man of mystery. Who is he? And and it's like, is he a good guy? Is he a bad guy? Like we've had that in um, you know, Boba Fett would be an instance of that. Yeah. Or um, Snake Eyes in in GI Joe, or um, the Silver Surfer when he was introduced in the '60s. There's it's like some of the most popular characters are that where it's it's like I don't know the Dark Horse or something. Like you're not sure where you stand with them. Are they a good guy? Or are they a bad? Guy? And like. The Green Ranger, you know, kind of like, you know, he goes, you know, back and forth and, you know. 
the white was there the white range the white range or why am I thinking Yeah, I think um like as the series went on um Tommy the Green Ranger like becomes the White Ranger. Yes. Oh yeah. So I was like a, a fan of the show and then when the movie came out I went to the movie saw that and and I think he's like the White Ranger in there or maybe he becomes the White you know something. I, once again, when that movie <clears throat> came out uh in the theater I was like, okay, this is serious like mm -hmm. Shit's got real, if like the Fox Power Rangers theatrical release, I was like, this is, yeah, this is I was, serious. I, I, was I, I, I was excited to see the movie. It's like grown up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and uh, like, it was a date, you know, like I, I went on a date to see them and, and it was kind of like, kind of like, oh, you're into this. Hmm. You know? Look, also see John, that's made of the big screen. Now, the Power Rangers movie um, uh, from the 90s did not deliver to me. Like, again, because it's. It's it's like a pure Saban production, and it just didn't like the 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 TV show was like high octane, high energy, boom boom like, and the movie it was paced like a movie. It was it was slower. It was you know it did like if they had you know if like the production team that made Super Sentai made the Power the Rangers, Rangers movie, movie. It would be a different like because it was like. Full on a relentless action, you know. I I remember those. Yeah, like like, um, like same with like the X Files movie. Like mm -hmm. it was what like what like a inject just like uh, an injection of like joy, like seeing your like a TV show or something you're into like. It graduated. Oh yeah, yeah. It's that's, it's, it's legit now. <laughs> it was some like stupid thing that my mom's yelling at me for watching, and now look, it's, it's, it's on the big screen. It's cinema. It's Kino. <laughs> it's Kino. Fight the future. Power Rangers for me went from being like sort of this guilty pleasure to like, you know, and then through like Super Sentai became like, oh, this is like the greatest thing ever. Like I love this, and I've I've explored the rest of the series, and it does it does feel like something magical happened. It, maybe it wouldn't have been a hit. If Saban had taken like an earlier season and introduced that, or if or if he took maybe like a later season, because like th there really does seem like there's something that the other seasons of of Super Sentai that I've watched are lacking that this has. And another sweet spot is like the very next season is a good season, but it starts to introduce CGI. Now the the um, the uh, Super Sentai Zoo Ranger season is like as this sweet spot where like cgi has not entered at all so it's still like old school practical love effects it love it and love like it, practical man. effects that they've been doing for decades and are now polished <laughs> to a t like like amazing get over it. Yeah. and and then you start as the seasons go on you get maybe some interesting storylines some interesting character designs and things but you start getting like bleeding edge cgi you, you get some like shitty cgi oh, boy. And then, and then eventually, like the CGI gets better. And so, but there's, there's like a magic that the practical effects have that you're just never gonna, you know. Uh, you know, practical effects are like are are timeless. Like, mm -hmm. it's still gonna hold up. Like, someone's like, it's a guy in a suit. It's like, nah, it holds up. <laughs> you know, and and like, you know, these these guys in, guys in a suit at this point at the point where this is this show's made are like it's got they got the ten thousand hours, they're like experience they've probably done a million experts, you know, experts and, and um uh, just like yeah and, and, and the story it, it goes in so many interesting directions. And then they're like this would have been a good thing to do in October for like our Halloween, but there's there's like there, like a Dracula guy shows up. It's it's like not one of the stronger episodes. And then there's like a a Frankenstein shows up. He's called Frankie. I remember that. that yeah. Oh my God. Yes. Is, does he pull his bolts out? Please. Yes. Yeah. Is that he, cause, yeah. Because yes. because in the in the Power Rangers, like some of that makes it to to the and like yeah, he pulls the bolts out of his neck and then has like nunchucks <laughs> that the bolts are, and like like I was watching that episode and it's like Frankenstein shows up and it's like oh, okay, this is kind of like. This is kind of, like some of the other villains had been kind of like really you know amazing and 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 unique and interesting. And it's like okay, Frankenstein. This is a little inside the box. And then yeah, when he takes the bolts out of his neck and makes nunchucks, it's like okay, I like that. This is cool. <laughs> but then it like goes into this like sublime territory where they like defeat him. He you know it becomes the the giant like in in the um, in the show the putties are called um, I think they're called mud golems or maybe just they're they're called golems 
which already is like such an improvement on the putties. Putties, it's kind of silly. Yeah. Golems, it like sort of ties it into like folklore, mythology, and legend. It, like it gives it some gravitas. They and they they look that their look doesn't reflect the putties too. Yeah. It's like let's undercut anything. Yeah. It's yeah. Golem is maybe too like it's a little too serious for a kids show. You know. Yeah. But it's like it's perfect. So so th there's that. Um, yeah, making uh, making Rita Repulsa. She's Pandora. That's cool, you know tying it into mythology. Yeah. They're called Dora monsters. It's like they're they're so it would be like Dora monster Frankie, you know, and uh, as in Pandora, as in Band okay. Bandora with a B. Um, and so you'd have Dora monster Frankie. So he grows up, he's giant, and then they they defeat him. You know, it's a giant Frankenstein. But then like he starts to they defeat him, and then he starts to like split open. Oh my god! And becomes this like hideous frightening creature where like you think you're hallucinating <laughs> watching this and it's like th this incredibly scary looking monster with like again like kind of like uh, weird analog effects and stuff and becomes um zombie frankie so it becomes this like zombie version of frankenstein like the coolest creature you've ever seen uh I, like i don't think he made it to power Rangers. i think he was too scary for like network <laughs> that tv sounds frightening. but so and like and this is like where the series like again like the series ramps up it goes into amazing territory after this and and yeah so they fight the zombie frankie this like terrifying like literally a terrifying creature and it like kind of hooked like at a point where i thought like okay maybe i'm starting to lose interest in this show. it like hooked me back in and then like the second half of the series is like so amazing like um satan shows up it's now again awesome. something that never shows up in network tv but like because like pandora she is like she very uh, like clearly invokes evil and like the, you know and, and and calls upon like the powers of evil, the powers of Satan. Eventually, kind of like you know the Emperor showing up in the Star Wars series, and it's like, oh, you thought Darth Vader was evil? Here's his boss. Here's somebody even evil. So it's like you think Rita Repulsa or uh, Bandora is evil. Here's her boss. Here comes Satan. Great. He's called like Great Satan. Because I, I remember, like, there was Rita, and then in the regular, in, in Power Rangers, Lord Zed showed up at some yeah, point. Yeah, I think he shows up in, like, season two or three. Lord Zed was a pure Saban creation. There, there are, like, Zombie Frankie, like, uh, Lord Zed has a couple of, like, maybe those Zombie Frankie design elements. Yeah. But, no, like, he was, he was a, 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 like, once Power Rangers was a hit, like, Saban was kind of, like, fully empowered got like a budget and then it, it kind of became his own series but yeah so so it wasn't lord zed it was great he was just this giant head painted white with like weird um things to, but it was like it was like you know great satan and, and i think there's even like pentagrams and stuff and like nice. he's, he's bringing it to, and it's like okay this stuff's not getting on like network kids tv mom look it's <laughs> satan yeah can i get the satan action figure please and then there's like all the, and and then you find out that like Rita Repulsa, Bandora, has like a son. And like he's he's like very eerie. He's he's kind of like a ghost all in white and like and um you know kind of scary and stuff. And and then um so awesome. Yeah, and it was like and then she's got a backstory where like the reason why she's so bitter is she had this son and he died young and now and, and then she gets to kind of like meet up with him. And so then it's even got like like a lot of pathos That's... for her. like her character goes through this full arc and she is like i mean she's like the highlight of power rangers and like you really get like i mean in um in uh super sentai you get to hear her voice like she's she's you know an amazing like just being able to hear her her Actual... voice like you get her you get the full performance That's rather awesome. than just like a bad voice overdub she, she's like Rita Repulsa. Here's my son, Peter Repulsa. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You can imagine if if this so, <laughs> if that storyline made it into the like like American version of the show. Oh no, we've defeated Rita. We have to deal with her son, Peter Repulsa. <laughs> Modeled after like Peter Brady, <laughs> with, like the same kind of outfit. Oh my gosh! I He's love like, to see his voice that. cracks. We'll have to do, that... do some fan art for, for this. Like yeah, when his voice cracks, like sound waves come out and hits the Zord. There's Goldar. I forget his name in uh, in uh, Super Sentai, but he's like you know called like Griffozor or Gr something like Griffozor, something like that. But like and and so you got him, you got Goldar, and then you have that like Scorpion woman character. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. In um, in in Super Sentai, they have like a whole romance. Like they're a couple, and they even um, they even have kids, <laughs> and they, they, and, um, and their their baby kind of. Uh, like it kind of like softens 
Bandora. It softens Rita Repulsa, and it kind of like gets her, like it gets her sort of back in touch with like what she lost when her son. Like it's it's really got this like ama- it's it's this full complete story. Godor always um, he would always be like lurking in mm-hmm. in Power Rangers. Like he, I don't remember him. I can't remember if he got if he like grew or, or not. But he yeah, he would be, grow. Like, yeah, he would grow mm-hmm. in like. Uh, they would never like defeat him because he'd always keep coming back. He keep coming back, yeah. I mean, and he is like Bandora's like lieutenant, and like there is like one episode where it's like mainly about him and defeating him. But he does, yeah, he is like a recurring bad guy. And, and then Zed, when like the putties were like Zed's henchmen, mm-hmm. they'd have like this Z on their chest that like when you hit it, they defeat him. And it's like, why do you, Zed what built you, in? Yeah, why, why why do you gotta give your henchmen a built in like like death button it's like (laughs) it's like the plot of of rogue one yeah mankind coexisting with dinosaurs in this kind of like lord of the rings fantasy world is kind of like the recurring motif of this is like the backstory and there's all these scenes uh and they have a mentor there's all these scenes in sort of like their sort of like library where they're like consulting old scrolls and stuff that'll have this beautiful artwork of of this like pageantry of like you know um uh, uh, knights riding on dragon back and stuff, and and a lot of like the the you know villains and story elements would sort of or or solutions to problems would come out of this like backstory stuff. Yeah, instead of Zordon, they have like a mentor who looks almost like a character out of Legend of Zelda. He's kind of like this this old wizard mentor um, with you know kind of like this cool uh, you know wizard outfit who who kind of like he's the one who like wakes them up when. Uh, you know, when, when Bandora comes back, but then uh, he's also, like, advising them and, and telling them all the stories. And then, um, like, uh, towards towards the end of the series, sort of, like, these dinosaur eggs start figuring into it and that, that we're going to, like, bring back the dinosaurs. Like, in, in, but they're good dinosaurs, you know. I love the dinosaur, like, uh, imagery and stuff in, in there. It, like, um, it was around the same time, like, Jurassic Park, so yeah. I had, like, heavy Jurassic Park fever still, so, mm-hmm. I mean, I'm like... I'll take any animals, like, ro- robot or, uh... <laughs> yeah, the the dinosaur, like, the sort of, like, mythological backdrop that the, um, that uh, Super Sentai Zoo Ranger has is kind of what sets it apart from uh, Power Rangers, but also sets it apart from other uh, seasons of Super Sentai, like... Like there's seasons where it's like they got the robot, they got the this, they, but they they don't have that mythic element. And and there's like maybe like one or two other seasons that kind of like approach that. I don't know if self consciously or not, where it's like, oh yeah, we need some of that mythology. But it was it just all comes together in this beautiful magical stew <laughs> in that in that I one can't. season. There are some, I mean I've seen cool seasons, and I know like people who are like really well versed in this stuff kind of maybe have some other seasons that they they say are like superior to this. I haven't I haven't found one yet. But there are like some cool, like there's one season where it's like, obviously like Rescue 911 must have been real big when they did this season. So it's like, it's all, all the robots and, and all the all the, the teenagers are all like, they each have like a rescue specialty. So one is like an ambulance driver, one's a firefighter, one's a police officer, you know, one's a this, this, that. And, and, and it's like, you know, Rescue 911 types. Like, Bill like, Shatner. Yeah, yeah like little household, like a kid that puts like a fork in the microwave or whatever and, and sets the house on fire. But and it's super cool, like the uh, fire truck robot, which he'll like take his fists and shoot them, and then the fists go flying up, and then there's like a ladder attached awesome. to the fist, and then like people like climb out of the burning building down the ladder, and stuff. that's cool. Great stuff. stuff. But again, it's like so great, so fun, but it's lacking the like you feel the 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 the, the void that's left by not having that like cool dinosaur mythology backdrop. I totally get that. I'd be like. Where's the woolly mammoth? Like, yes. I always appreciated that woolly mammoth in the mix. The context that they give all of these different characters and the different uh, robots and the different dinosaurs is like, it's it, it has so much more meaning in the original version. And, and it, like, there's a lot of like arbitrary, like stupid decisions in power. Like I know for some people this is like sacrilege to like criticize <laughs> Power Rangers. But like when you see the original, you're like, Okay, see you later, Power Rangers. Like, I'm done with you. I'm, I'm into this thing over here. No, that yeah, the that one didn't have bulk and skull in it. <laughs> you know, yeah, exactly. Like that's that's my big complaint with the series is bulk and skull, and and there's no bulk and skull in this. It's all it's all dinosaurs, mythology, golems, uh, witches. You know, it's all the uh, Satan. It's got all this stuff where it's like, wow, this is such amazing footage. How did this get left on the cutting room floor? And like, um. 
this kind of like reinvigorated my my like love of Power Rangers, and so I kind of like went back and revisited because like it's a lot easier to get your hands on like old seasons of Power Rangers than it is getting your hands on old seasons of of you know uh, Super Sentai. Super Sentai. It's like all these like transformations and like upping the stakes, and like a monster just keeps getting worse. And then you you see the you see the formula for a while where you fight a monster, he's normal size, then he grows. Uh, after um, Bandora invokes the name of Satan and evil spirits, they grow to a giant size, and then they defeat the giant size. You see that formula repeated a couple times, and then it's like once you're starting to get tired of that formula, then it's like okay, he turns giant, and then after he turns giant, he he, he rips in half, and Zombie Frankie comes out. They're like at my funeral, they're <laughs> like uh, he uh, his will. He wanted a video to be played. Uh, we're not sure what it is, and they, they like I, I it's 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 just him pulling like the bolts. <laughs> Yeah, like, the like, physics the? of it don't really work. <laughs> like, how does he get the chain out, like, from his neck, you know? Like, he doesn't, like, just pull them both out on one side and, you know, pop it. Like, he goes like this, like, but it's beauty. It's beautiful. <laughs> That's my huge gripe with the original uh, Frankenstein. Yeah. <laughs> Where we do with Frankenstein. Yeah, isn't, like, isn't Frankenstein improved when he is able to take <laughs> the, the bolts out of his <laughs> neck and, and make nunchucks out jumps. of them? Like, the creators of this show we're just like, they're so experienced by this point and they're just going for broke and they're just having fun and they're just, and they kind of don't care and it's it's creating, but but they're bringing all this tremendous, like it's like you care and you don't care. You have tremendous skill, but you're not overly precious and then you create high art out of it. Um, Super Sentai had been a series that went on for years and then when Power Rangers came out, Power Rangers just broke big. Like it became a, global phenomenon, like specifically Power Rangers became this like global mega hit phenomenon. So then um, after that point, you start seeing the influence of Power Rangers coming back and influencing the original. So Super Sentai becomes more like Power Rangers and like sort of Saban has sort of more, you know, say ultimately in, in what Super Sentai becomes because, you know, f for good or ill. Because there's been, it seems like so many uh, versions now of Power Rangers, like, I've lost track of, uh... Sure, it's like a multi-generational thing, and, and, like, Power Rangers would get a lot more seasons out of one cast, or once, you know, they'd show up in new costumes where, like, in Super Sentai, those costumes were with a different season, with a different set of characters, with a different backstory, with a, you know, different setup, uh, where, like, you'd have a couple, but, but there has been a number of turnovers in the in the Power Rangers cast. The Bond would like put in requests, like he would say like, I want you guys to do like a space season, like sort of like a Star Trek kind of season. And then, so, cause I want to do a space season. So like, I want oh, you to- Oh, that's awesome. And, and like, they didn't really get around to it, but they did, um, it was like, it was like a virtual reality season where like, it was, um, you know, they'd go inside a computer and, and do, and there'd be a lot of virtual, or, or like, um, kind of like Tron, oh, backwards and forwards, and, and then there'd be Tron, there'd be like digital characters that come into the real world, and real world characters go into the digital world. Saban took that season and then turned it into Power Rangers Space. He kind of like, he would add like a red filter to the action to be like, okay, we're on the red we're, planet that's now, amazing. okay, and then a, a, a green filter. I'm into green, that. Yeah, yeah I, like, I like that season of Power Rangers. Um, again, it is like power, when I watch Power Rangers, I do a lot of fast forwarding, you know, get, get I try to like cherry pick the, the uh, you know, the, the action, action scenes. One thing that I kind of, kind of wonder, um, is sort of like, you know, some, uh, media that's made for children like Star Wars or like, you know, Marvel comics or whatever, um, like people are able to like sort of grow up with it and take it with them into adulthood. And um, for some reason, like, I don't quite understand why that's not the case with Power It seems like Power Rangers, a lot of people just kind of leave it behind as like, oh, that was something I was into as a kid, and maybe I have some nostalgia, for, but they don't, like, it, it kind of, like, why is, like, a Power, like, why is a Power Rangers, like, movie or whatever a harder sell than a Spider-Man movie or a Captain America? Like, I don't, I don't, I don't quite get the difference. I mean, I could make some arguments, but like, I wonder if it's not like, maybe there's like a lack of like intermediate version. Like it's kind of like, um, you know, uh, the, the Marvel stuff and Star Wars, it's kind of like you can, um, there's like, you a know, trail. Yeah, like when, when you're, when you're four years old, you can watch this one. And then when you're, and then it's like, okay, now you're like 
uh, uh, preteen or teenage, and now you're like really into Empire Strikes Back because that's like real dark. And then it's like you get a little, you know, like you can where like it seems like Power Rangers. It's like it didn't have that like stepping stone that kind of takes you from childhood to adolescence and then into into adulthood with it. That yeah, that's great. That's a great point because yeah, it feels even though there was. Um versions like you mentioned like with space and stuff yeah. it feels like they're um of a of a piece like there's there wasn't like a like an edgy version right yeah or like it's just like a different version of that same style well, it's, so yeah, it, it never moved away from that like it's gonna like like they found a formula and stuck with it and it's like and they stuck with their core audience where it's like we're not like Power Rangers isn't going to grow up with you. Like yes, Marvel Comics the, yes, grew up yes. with the original generation of sort of Marvel Comics fans. Power Rangers isn't going to grow up with you. You're going to grow well, up, I'll, and then there's going to be a new set of kids that we'll Power Rangers is going to be for them, and then they're going to grow up, and then the next set of kids. Yeah, like like it did. It didn't. It didn't have that, and so that new one that that uh, was from a few years back too. Um, it, it it didn't have it didn't feel like it. It, it was very vanilla. It was vanilla. It did it didn't deliver like um like I think you need to like embrace the weirdness and like you know like really and and you know yeah you talk about like okay there wasn't like an edgy one because there's been like sort not of, that that's good but right. you know what I mean. no but there's been like edgy plenty of like edgy Spider Man comics and edgy uh you know movies and edgy Batman comics edgy Batman movies um. And there, there hasn't been an edgy Power Rangers, but a couple of years prior to like Saban's like big, relatively recent Power Rangers movie, there was like this trailer circulating. It's a, a director made, and he made it just like for fun and almost to kind of like goof on Power Rangers. He made like this trailer for like an edgy um, Power Rangers, kind of like what you know the Battlestar Galactica TV, like the newer TV series was compared to the TV series from like the late seventies, early eighties. Um, and, and it even it had Katie Sackhoff, uh, who played oh, yeah, Starbuck, you yeah, in, you in, yeah, in 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 Battlestar Galactica. It was like this, like edgy, and it was like, you know, like Power Rangers is grown up now, and 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 it it was really good. It really like it really, and it's like I wanted to see that movie, and 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 people kind of like fell in love with this trailer, and then the creator of the trailer kind of like was like, oh no, no, I'm I'm goofing on the way Hollywood keeps recycling stuff and bring it back and, and like here's the ultimate goof they're taking the ultimate piece of shit the ultimate turd power rangers and they're making a series movie ha 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 there's the, but it's like no like no this is great this is amazing i want this, I want this. yeah 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 you're missing the, you're saying we're missing the point you're missing the point and then and um and it got removed from the internet not um not because of that but because saban had a you know like what was to become the the power rangers like movie he had that kind of in the works and like this, you know, he saw this as kind of like stealing some of the thunder or, or, or like, and, and again, it's like, okay, this, maybe it's technically in violation of, of some kind of, you know, something. Don't want to blow up his spot. Yeah, exactly. So he kind of, but it's like, it would have been cool if he kind of teamed up yeah. <laughs> with this crew and because I, I, I would have been there for that. Be the, the, the real like serious Power Rangers movie that Saban produced I'm not so in love with that, but this this one is the like more to my taste. For the, the trailer for that one, they tried to make it where it was like, "Whoa, this could be uh, this could be that." Well, here's it, here's the problem with the 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 Saban produced uh, movie was that he was trying to class it up. He's like, but it's like, no, you gotta like lean into lean it, lean in, yeah, exactly. Like he wanted to make Goldar into something that that is like less kind of like goofy. But then he made it, Goldar into something boring and and completely forgettable. It's like no, you gotta like give us Goldar, <laughs> like give us Goldar times a hundred, you know. That's and and again, it's like you can't use that that cinema rhythm of the seventies or whatever. Like you gotta give us like hyper, like like ex accelerate the pace. Step on the of, gas. Yeah, step on the gas. Okay, this you know in the nineties, Power Rangers was full speed. It's like we should be. Ten times beyond that now. There is uh, money left on the table with the Power Rangers right now. I think yeah. there's a, a, um, yeah, a a, 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 a Power Rangers uh, power vacuum. Yes. And uh, the Total Recall show could fill that void. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you, yeah. you picking up. I'm picking up. You want to put yeah. down? I mean, there? I've 
I mean, yeah, I, I'd, I'd be more excited, but I, like I've, I've had my uh, uh, interactions with um, like the Saban Corporation. It, like, Interesting. I, I okay. was I, like, I um, was hired to create a cover, art, cover art for an issue of the Power Rangers comic. Okay. And like, this was like at the height of my. Super Sentai Mania, okay. and I, I, I embraced it, and I jumped in it, with, and I was like, "Yes, I want to do like I want to make Power Rangers comics." You got the keys, <laughs> yeah, I got the, and, and, but it was just for, to do a cover, you know, and so I drew the cover, put put like my heart and soul, and so proud of it, and uh, the Saban Corporation, <laughs> they nixed they and they gave me some some okay, I want you to do this, this, and this. And it and I was like, well, if I do that, that, and that, it's it's destroying like the inter- But I I did I did, and uh, as of yet, um, as far as I know, that the 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 version that like I, I created this version that I am a hundred percent behind, I think is 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 great. I'm very proud of. And then I did the version, you know, the, you know, of towing the line. And uh, as of yet, it's it, it has not seen print yet. It has not seen print yet. And you know, whatever. I don't care. Like I, I you know, I'm. I'm not particularly proud of of that version, but this first version, like I would, I would sh- shout from the rooftops, you know. So, so again, like I'm, so I'm not, I'm not looking to get into business with the Saban. Like, I, like there's different licensors that that you work with, and some, like, like I need a lot of leeway. Some give you the leeway, some don't, and 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 the Saban Corporation does not. Like, and again, you know, more power to you. Like, you know what you're doing. You got this. It's it's a successful thing. That's Going strong, like how many, like it's like Gunsmoke or something. Like how many, <laughs> how many shows are still, you know, going going strong, you know, decades later. The the toys, this the Power Rangers toys are pretty cool too. They are really cool. Like uh, anything that like joins together. Um, um, I was like when I was little, Voltron was like yes, was was choice. That, so this was like filling that Voltron like. Uh, that's that's what that's what Power Ra- like that's what Super Sentai Zoo Ranger. It fulfilled the promise of all those things, because like as I was a kid, when I was a kid, I loved Voltron, but it's like it needs a little something. It's missing something, and and then Super Sentai Zoo Ranger like delivered on 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 the potential in in all those things. The uh, I um I never had the the like the Power Ranger toys, but somehow I like I knew folks that did have them, so. I would just sit there, like they're like, I'm like, what were you saying to me? I was too yeah. busy like combining this uh, well, and, awesome toy. Here. And you got like the, the the quick change figures where like they'd go from like their their civilian yes. identity to to the. To I the, love those. And um, and yet the way like all the robots go together, and like watching, uh, like uh, Super Sentai, like by that point they had like fully figured out like like it was t- toyetic. They'd figured out how to make robots and and things that are extremely compelling that they can make into toys that you want to ch- and and the way they fold up and combine and and, and this uh this robot dinosaur opens up and then the other di- robot dinosaur goes inside and be, like it's like I want all that all that stuff I'm seeing I want it I mean especially like the practical effect aspect of of it is like kind of like makes you want the to- because like the thing that you're watching is practically like a toy already yeah. so it's like the megazord in 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 Power Rangers, like he's just got such a great look. He's got he, the way he moves is amazing. Like with like such power, and then the sound effects, the sound effects that go, it's like this. It's like so satisfying. Like watching watching this thing, like uh, you know, punch or jump kick or whatever. Like like a giant uh, guy I in a rubber suit monster. Love when like they're like in a like a jump kick form and they yeah. like shoot across across. Yeah, the yeah. You just see like a pair of feet go, <laughs> you know, or like two fists coming up. Yeah, it's 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 just amazing stuff, and and like I've I've recently like, you know, started a rewatch of like going back to the beginning and watching it from the start, and I'm you know, and and then I'll, once I exhaust that, I'll probably go back to checking out like the, some of the Power Rangers seasons and cherry picking all the all the cool action. Uh, anything with like a, a jack o' lantern? I remember there was like a bad guy. It was like from the pumpkin patch. Mm-hmm. And I was like that when I was. Yeah, there, like, there was like, like a, a pig head. There was like a yeah. Pi- there, it was like a bounce. It was like like a Mad Balls or something. It was like a, like a That's, pig oh head that God. would just like bounce. Yeah. <laughs> the the pig head. He had like a like a Roman like helmet on. Yeah, there's like there's like one episode of Super Sentai where there's like an inventor who like flies around 
in this like VW bug that flies and stuff. <laughs> and then in like Power Rangers, they took that those couple bits of footage and made it into like a vehicle that was like fully incorporated into the whole series. I'd be interested to hear your perspective, like somebody who kind of like grew up like really um, in, like immersed in like Power Rangers yeah. as Power Rangers to then like watch I Super mean, Sentai uh, and see, because it's, it's almost like seeing, um, you know, like this, this like prototype of like like a mythology that's like that you know kind of like like intimately and, and have like all these associations with, and then see like, oh wow, that that part belongs over there, and th and whoa, where's all this come from? You know, I get like yeah, like because it was like less so for me, like like I'm not as tied to the, just because I was like a little bit older when you know, oh I, it came I out. we would watch I would watch Power Rangers daily. Every, like, at recess, we would play Power Rangers, mm -hmm. and, uh... This is from Power Rangers Season 1, Episode 3. It's the angel setting, Angel Grove Youth <laughs> Setting. I will play Arnie or whatever the guy mm -hmm. is, like, the guy behind the counter. Yeah, the, the, <laughs> like, the, the, the Joey Tata role. Hey, what are you kids doing <laughs> at my malt shop? <laughs> Bulk, skull, get out of here! <laughs> like, scram! Scram! Hey, it's... Austin St. John, happy 30th birthday. Uh, you're a senior, right? Or whatever. Like Power Rangers, it was very topical in that he would just kind of like freely grab from like whatever seemed like it was of the moment. And this the series as a whole is kind of, of, of Super Sentai is kind of like that too. It's like, okay, James Bond's real hot. We got some James Bond elements. Okay, uh, the $6 million man's hot. We got some $6 million man. Oh, okay, Rescue 911's hot. And then like, when like the pirate craze started happening with like uh, you know the the Pirates of the Caribbean, it's oh, like yeah. okay, it got very nautical and very piratey uh, for a while. They yeah they grab everything from pop culture. There's mm -hmm. like NCIS Power Rangers. Well um, yeah right exactly <laughs> pretty much yeah. And then um, there there and then there is sort of the ultimate where it's like the the season of like. Um, Power Rangers and Turtle Ninja Turtles crossover. Oh, I didn't even. I didn't yeah, there's know. like a, there's a season of Power Rangers where it's like Ninja Turtles what? and the Power Rangers together. What? See, that's the thing. Like, <laughs> like it's it's kind of a shame that that like they didn't figure out a way to keep people hooked into adulthood on Power Rangers because there 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 are all these like gems. That, the, yeah, they they like they um. Like, we'll have to do some math, but maybe just enough decades haven't passed because there was a time you know like Batman comes out in 1939. And then, like, in the 60s, you know, 30 or less years later, like, the idea of, like, a serious Batman is still ridiculous. It, it's on TV, and it's it's a goof still. But then two more decades pass, you get into the 80s, and all of a sudden we're ready for a serious Batman. Batman's not a joke anymore. So maybe it's, like, Power Rangers premieres in the 90s, you know, 20 years after that in, like, the 2010s, it's, like... We're starting to get a little, but but it's still a goof, and so then, twenty years after this, so it would be like the the uh, the twenty thirties is when we're gonna see like the serious Power, Power Rangers, Rangers come into full fruition, where it's like, oh yeah, Power, Power Rangers, you know, it's it's like dead the the, the Tim Burton Power <laughs> Rangers, yeah. you know, uh, the Tim Burton of twenty thirty. Are Power Rangers still being made? Yeah, there's still fresh new that, seasons of Power so, Rangers. Yeah, that's not that like. And Saban, he, he sold it at a certain point. He sold off the Power Rangers and was, like, sort of done with it. And then he, like, later on came back and bought them back. So it's, it, you know, it's, it's that kind of story. Once too. again, we were talking about the other series, like Halloween or other stuff. Yeah. Like, why do people that have like, these properties always want to, like, dip on? <laughs> it's like, a, I mean, life is long, and you go on these little side journeys, and sometimes you come back home, you know. You know, like, we'll be ready for it in 2030, so. We, we've timed it out. Hang in there, Matt. <laughs> it's coming. You just got to hang in there a couple more decades. Uh, or one more day. You just gotta hang hang in there ten more years, and and, and you'll get you'll get your grim gritty Power Rangers that, that you always wanted. I'm excited. Yeah, I'll see you. Th I'll see I'll you there, see there in, in 2039. 30. 2039, we'll uh, check out uh, the gritty pa grim, Power Rangers. Grim gritty Power Rangers. Finally, Power Rangers get their due. You've been watching Total Recall. I'm Tom Scholey, author of Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics, and I've just launched a Patreon. Uh, you can go to patreon.com and, and do a search for Tom Scholey, S-C-I-O-L-I, -I, and, and you'll find me. And you can follow me on Twitter at Tom Scholey or on Instagram at Tom underscore Scholey. My name is Matt Zioli. You can follow me on Instagram at cinema underscore tune. You can follow the show uh, on Twitter at Total Recall Show or on Instagram at Total underscore Recall underscore Show. 
This episode is, is being filmed by Brian Nadja, and you can check out his website, adspice.net. I release an album, 11 tracks, uh, under uh, the name Santa Mira Video. You can check that out at santamiravideo.bandcamp.com. Uh, listen and download. And we'll have the links to all that stuff uh, under the video. See you next time.